Wow, it happens all the time. They don't want to let your boy in on the live. I don't know what the hell's going on, man. Is it YouTube? Is it the internet connection? Is it the fact that we talk a bunch of shit on here? Is it the fact that we help people? I don't know what it is. Maybe you guys might know. But it took me six minutes, seven minutes to get in here. I don't know why they do that, man, but it is what it is, man. Maybe we ain't making enough money for you, too. Don't get mad that I got the Elmo brush tonight. Lost the beard brush. The only thing I find was the Elmo. But anyway, it's all good. We'll let people come in. We're going to do a little talking tonight, address some of the stuff that we, you know, did this week on videos. So we'll talk to the people. Excuse me. So it says there's only two people in here, but I see a bunch of folks up in here. Bam, what's up, man? This is my son's brush. I, I couldn't find the beard brush, so my wife bought me one. This just showed up. And this this thing, man, woo, feels like sandpaper. That thing there ain't for me. It's Elmo for your boy. I know some people might want to talk about Von Miller tonight, huh? Miller time. Oh, Miller, man, he's probably out of there, man. What's up, Chad? How can I buy the audiobook? Send me an email. Been super, super busy doing a lot of work. Um, Been sick. The whole family's been sick. I ate so many of these intense cough drops. Damn, man, my cheeks are raw, man. Crazy. But anyway, we're going to talk about the lady that we had on the other day. We'll talk about Alabama a little bit. Talk about Bernard Jamison. Talk about his cat. He wanted me to talk about his cat tonight. You know, show that there is some humanity in Alabama, although there's a whole lot of no good in Alabama, right? And some people have commented, Miller, who knows what really happened? Yeah, I seen like the police report. The chick said he grabbed her for like three seconds. I know he ain't doing no tackling on the field. He done stole that money. But anyway, this ain't an NFL channel. This is our channel, Prison Genre, True Crime. Got some more true crime stuff coming up, documentaries, documentaries, whatever you guys want me to call them, I'll call them. But um, we got some of that stuff coming up. My man said, so whatever happened to the T-shirt? Listen, bro, we ain't had T-shirts in months, man. You want to know the truth? I bought all those T-shirts. I sent a bunch of them out. If you got it, man, great. If you didn't, I apologize, man. Um, and I wore a bunch of them, man. I wore blood on the razor wire t-shirts every day, a new one until they were gone. So anyway, did people go over there and check out that Instagram? Because after I had talked about some of the stuff and the things that were going on with that lady, I wanted people to go check out that Instagram. And that's the dude that's on our thumbnail, right? Um, I've seen a lot of violence, right? A lot of crazy things in my life, whether it was in the street. Bear with me because I'm still sick. Like I said, I got a, I don't know. Well, I'm not feeling so hot. But anyway, no no more cough drops down here. My shit is raw. Um, I wanted people to go check out that Instagram. Like I said, man, I've seen a lot of vicious things in my life, whether it was in the street. 87 people, 27 likes. Hit the like button, man. Show your boy some love tonight. Blood on the razor wire. A Sparky 2. Appreciate you, man, and all that you do for the channel, all that you do for the people. Good guy right there. Um, So I wanted people to go check out that Instagram story right on my Instagram. And I had posted it on the, uh, on the community page. So you can see what my Instagram is and all of that. And this is one of the most vicious things that I've ever seen, whether it's on video in real life, a movie, they got this kid tied up. Could you imagine what it's like to be tied up in prison? Yeah. They tied his ass up. YouTube needs to stop censoring. Whoa. They stop censoring. Things will be off the chain. People had this thing popping like the back page. <laughs> um, just in case, that was my alias. So anyway, you have Venmo, Chad. Yes, I do. I have Venmo. Don't really know what the hell the Venmo is, but I got Venmo. Um, but anyway, damn, man. That was one of my clients calling me, wanting to talk to me. So, you know, you go on this thing, this dude's tied up. Imagine what it's like to have about four or five dudes tie you up. Hands behind your back, tie your feet. And really, it looks like they, you know, let's call it what it is. Looks like they made a switch. Like them lashes, right? Out of like a cord off a of television or something, man. I don't know what the hell it was. And they're just beating this kid, man, hitting him in the face. And then at the end of the video, he's like rolled over. He's like, <sighs> blood everywhere. It looks like his eye is popped out. I mean, damn, man. Just think about that for a minute. Think about that. And we're going to talk about a kid from Alabama in a minute and his mama and all that, right? 
YouTube needs to start monetizing our vids. They're killing us, man. They don't want us to make no money, baby. I don't know if that's the Venmo uh, country. Let me look and see. What is the Venmo? We'll, we'll tell them what the Venmo is. But anyway, I think. <laughs> yep. Chad Marks 8. I think country got it right. That's it. Country got it right. Damn. I ain't got no money out my Venmo. Your boy is broke. No, I'm just playing. Um, so anyway, whatever you do, man, we appreciate. We're trying to do some good things for people. Um, so yeah, dude's tied up, just getting beat, man. So if you went and seen the, the, the video on Instagram, just hit a yes on here. I couldn't even imagine how scary that is. Yo, this ain't scared straight. This is reality, man. Man, you end up in prison in Alabama. You end up in prison in Georgia. All these people have seen this. That was vicious, right? Dude's like, ah, 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 you can't do nothing. And you're like, wow, man. Let's hit that like for our boy. I thought it said boo. About to say, damn, bro, you better edit that joint. No, I'm just playing. 54 likes, man. Get us up to 100 likes. We'll start giving out some stuff. What do I got in here to give out? How about a busted by the feds book, huh? The official one from Chad, right from prison. Autograph, busted by the feds. No, that's all I had on my desk. I can't give out the busted by the feds. But Charlie Parker, I got something coming your way, man. I hope you like it, man. It's a Christmas present, brother. I definitely appreciate you too, man, more than I could ever say in words. Please find time to write blood on the razor wire, beyond the bluegrass, the shot caller years. I read your first book twice. Excellent. Mark, I appreciate that. So some people get mad when I read comments, but that's why we do this, right? Chad, who would you rather have leading your team? CJ Stroud. Come on, bro. I'm a Bills fan. Look, if you've seen the Josh Allen, if you've seen the Philly game the other day, if dude misses the 60-yard field goal, everybody's talking about how great the Bills are and that they beat the best team in the NFL and they're on their way to the Super Bowl. Everybody knew that dude was going to miss that 60-yarder, right? What was the spread in that game, three? Everybody knew he was going to miss it. And the Bills were going to ride off into the sunset. Didn't happen. My man hit a 60-yarder with a whole bunch of room. We only got 69 likes. We need 31 more. Let's go. Hit that like button. We'll start giving out some free shit, and it won't be the busted by the feds book. It's Christmas time, man. It's a wonderful time, right? Christmas. Late but here. Queens. So anyway, I know Enlo, that wasn't his book. <laughs> I want a book. Continuing to pro progress. Send me an email. Country, put up the email for her. We're going to send you a free book, all right? Shout out 603 New Hampshire. Okay, New Hampshire in the house. Chad, the beard looks good. I had to have my wife trim that joint down the other day, man. It was looking like, boy, they got me looking like Santa Claus. So just imagine that. Imagine being tied up and beat, man. And, and, and you know something? I showed this to someone that was close to me that was involved in a lot of violence in his life. And and he's like, damn, bro. He's like, I understand, you know, you get into it with someone. and But that was just, he was like, man, that was just way overboard, right? Like this dude's begging for mercy, man. And you're standing over the top of him. And I've said before that I don't believe. Brent Edwards, you gave me a book when I was down. How do I donate a book? I'm just giving out the uh, gray beard, Chad. Yeah, your boy's getting old, man. Um, I don't have any more books for sale. I just do the, um, Chris, Chris, I just got that Tyrone. I just got the, I just got the Venmo too, man. I appreciate you guys. All right. Um, so we just do the audio books. We need 12 more likes, man. We'll give out some free stuff tonight. Anyone wants to help support, you can send it through the cash app. I posted that video on Facebook. Absolutely crazy, man. And there's nothing you can do. All you could do is lay there and just wish that this shit would stop. My and my my brother was like, my, my, he was just like, damn, bro. Sometimes, man, like you gotta have some remorse. Like, you ever get into it with someone and you're mad, and you guys get into you kind of whooping them, and you're like, all right, man, dude's had enough. I had this fight in the county jail with this Dominican kid, man. Danny, Dominican Danny. Danny was a good dude, man. We ended up becoming friends later on in life. I might have talked about this before. But he didn't like me, man. I didn't dislike him, but he didn't like me in the beginning. 
And he wanted to, you know, he wanted to get it in. We were in there rocking and he was grabbing me by my, yeah, he grabbed me by the, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, and he's squeezing. And I'm like, oh, sh and I'm just hitting this kid like, boom, I'm just hitting him with hooks to the face. And he's not letting go. And finally I had to bite him in the back. And then I, you know, commenced to whooping him pretty bad. And then, you know what? I felt remorse, man. Sometimes you feel a little bit of remorse. Not on no tough guy shit, but you feel remorse. These dudes had no remorse. And in my mind, you know, I said, I don't, I, I don't respect the death penalty, right? Unless you do something to kids. But now that I'm starting to see some of these videos and the shit that I see, man, them dudes deserve a death penalty, man. Someone might get mad at me for saying that, but them dudes are wicked, man. Viciousness. Well, you don't know what that guy did in prison. I guarantee, man, it was his, they were ops, gang ops. Or he did something and violated the homies, and this is how they really put that work in. You guys seen it. You seen with the sack dudes what they did to their homie. Had a little bit of a drug debt, didn't pay it. This is a dude they ate with every day. I got his pictures on my computer right here. Just viciously, viciously attacked dude, man. This is a dude that you used to be cool with, man. Dude used to eat with. Dude used to be all right with. Like, come on, man. Chad, what is your excellent business? Did you get a law degree? Are you a lawyer? Go Bills. I am not a lawyer, but I am a paralegal, and I do a lot of work for lawyers all over the country. And I'm willing to put my record up against any other lawyer in the country. What? Why would you say that? Audio, please, sir. Chris, if you want an audiobook, email us. Audiobooks are going out in the morning. Chad, you ever play fantasy football? Of, of course. Tiny Whitaker says, you can't fight. <laughs> You can't fight, Chad. I'm going to get out there and harass you. <laughs> You're just mad because that, you know, that midget knocked you out and did pull-ups on your back. You can't fight. You should be able to fight a little bit, man, but you're probably right, man. I'm getting old, man. I probably can't fight. But I used to be able to. Tiny says, I love you, dog. After you said I can't fight. Ah! How can I buy your book for my husband? You know, I used to tell people, um, I used to tell people just buy them from me because of Amazon. But go to Amazon. We get a couple dollars. But if you want that, you know, soft cover book, man, go to Amazon. They're for sale over there. And I get a check every once in a while with a couple dollars. Not much. I can tell you that. But it just became a lot of work, man, working, signing books every day. Not that I don't appreciate people, but Maria says, I want a audio book. Maria Giannate. All right, Maria, you get a book. Is the email in the description? Post that email, country, if you can, or Bam. Oh, there it is. Bam posted it. There it is. Email me. What we're doing tonight, man. Life is the best teacher. I always watch this channel. I always do the channel. It's great. It's our channel, man. It ain't my channel. It's our channel. Bronx in the house with the 99 cent piece tonight. Chad, you seem like a good dude. I do care about people. I don't like, man, when you see stuff like that. You know, dudes getting beat in the face, nobody helping. Just, that's vicious, man. That's vicious to do stuff like that. So Alabama, right? You guys did see the community post. I was going to post the stuff with her son, but I didn't. But I posted all the people that have died in Alabama. People are like, man, they got to sue them. They got to get the Department of Justice in there. For those of you that don't know, in Alabama, the Department of Justice has been doing an investigation for, I believe, over five years. And people are still killing each other. People are still OD. And they got a, a death in Alabama every single day. It might not be in the same exact prison, but every single day. Whether you're killed, whether they're overdosing, people are dying, man. You want to talk about genocide in the United States? There it is. Oh, how could you say that? It isn't that much comparable to what happened over here and over. How can I say it? Man, nobody should be dying like that, man. Nobody. Ah, don't worry, man. We got some free stuff. A lot of people in here don't have a lot of stuff, so we got to give out some free stuff, man, for supporting the channel. You should do an interview with 16 to Life. He's on YouTube and did 24 years straight. Damn, I see a little fruit fly down here. I got a bananas or apple in here or something. I'm just playing. I see him, but you guys probably see him too. So <clears throat> down there in Alabama, right? Chad, what's your Instagram? They want to see the Instagram. <clears throat> Let's see.
Instagram is Chad Marks 101. That's that Instagram. So go check out that Instagram. Check out that video. I thought the white country boys in Bama were tough. So did I, the white Denzel. And people are like, you would never. People always say, if I was in that position, I would. I'm just going to tell you what it is for me. I would probably have to die, man. I'm not letting no one bend me over and put me in a high leg. You know what I'm saying? That's not happening. You got to kill me, man. What's your cash app? Chat with stacks. They really need. They really need change down there. My cash app. Chris put up the cash app. Let me see. That's the cash app. We appreciate you. Whatever you do, man. Swing on the like button. So anyway, how about this Bills shirt though? With the, you know, what I'm saying if they went out right now, look, man. I know the Bucks did it. Not saying that they're definitely going to do it. They are a good team, man. You know, I'm just saying it because it's my team. It's uh. I think they're a good team, man. They had some bad breaks and never get lucky, right? Like, we never get lucky, dude. Like Scott Norwood, you know what I'm saying? He kicks the ball right, wide right. I'm like 10 years old in my room, punished, I think, watching my little black and white TV. I'm supposed to be punished. I had to watch it. Oh, Scott, he blew it. We never get lucky. But anyway, um, yeah, back to Alabama, right? I've tried to read the comments because, you know, when we do a live, it's for all of us. Um, definitely appreciate everybody coming in. Appreciate the people donating, whatever. Um, the lady comes on the show. I talked to her. I can tell you guys this. I believe that the FBI had contacted her after the video. I'll just say that, right? She has the cash apps. I believe that her son was violated in prison. I believe he went in there young, ignorant, don't really know much about the streets, just thinks he knows everything, but don't know much, right? Um, gang member ends up getting violated. Don't want to fight back. Is he on drugs? 100%. I believe he's on drugs. 100%. You know, he used, you know, the first couple incidents to kind of play his mom. He played off of those. I believe his mom sent him the money and he's getting high. Him and his partner are manipulating his mother. That shit happens. So what do they do? They give him a couple of those, you know, superficial stab wounds. Damn, mom didn't stab me in the arm. They got a little ice pick. You see the little holes in the pictures, and they poke them. A little bit of blood. Look what happened, Mom. Look what happened. They're going to kill me, Mama. Send that bread. And she sends it. And let me tell you something, man. For you to do something like that to your mother, you got to be out of your mind. You're extorting your own mother. That's what I think was going on over there. But don't get it twisted. Alabama, and I've said this before, is the most dangerous prison system in the country. Whether you believe it or not, in my, in my opinion, the most dangerous. Next is Georgia. Then you start moving around Mississippi, Florida. Dangerous, dangerous places. Not a place you want to be. Young man, you're out there. Look at her son. 17 years old, you know, thinking he's tough. Rob's a dude for some weed and gets 20 years. Man, I couldn't see that far at 17. 17 years old, and they're hitting the gavel on your ass. Goes to prison at 17. He never experienced life. Dealing with pain and misery. You guys want it real and raw? Dealing with loneliness away from his family. And he starts getting high. Starts getting high. He's shooting fentanyl in prison. Started at 17, going to prison. Street dude, yo, with that business. Where's the ops at? I'm over here taking shit. I'm over here punching people in the face just for living. On that tough guy stuff. And in the end, he turns into a dope fiend that starts extorting his own mother. That's what it is. Took some investigation. You heard me ask some of the questions. That's what I do. I ask you real questions. I'm not tell you guys, I'm going to pay my bills off YouTube. Man, I don't want them to shut it down, but if they ever did, I'm still going to be all right. We'll figure out another way to kick it. We might go on Facebook Live, TikTok. We'll figure something out. Um, But, you know, I asked her, why are you smiling, right? And, you know, I had asked another brother that was doing an interview on here that was talking about, you know, certain things as far as – uh violence and how it affected him. And he was laughing and he was smiling. But sometimes people do that to hide their pain, their desperation, their loneliness, right? Or their how they feel. You know, it's like a mask. You feel uncomfortable. People get on YouTube and they get on a video, they feel uncomfortable. Like, hey, are they going to interview me? Look, straight up, I had a captain the other day that I spoke to. He ended up becoming an associate warden too. 
He was the captain at the SMU program for many, many years. I thought I had him lined up for an interview. He was supposed to come on. And he didn't, you know, he didn't, uh, he didn't call me back when he was supposed to so we could do the interview. Sometimes people get shook up. I like to interview people like that. Wouldn't you like to hear from the captain from the SMU program, the Federal Special Management Unit? He's around some of the most dangerous dudes you could ever be around. I don't know. Seems like a good dude for real. When I talked to him, I think he got scared. I think he got a little bit scared. But it's all right. Maria, when I get off of here, I'll send you guys all your audio books. I got all of you. Stephanie, you too. I see it. I got you. So, yeah, that, I mean, when you walk into, this just said I don't have access to this feature. See what I mean about this YouTube shit, man? This shit's crazy. But, you know, when we talk about prison and, and, and people do these videos, and, and sometimes, like, some people do videos about people. I talk to the people, man. Like, the videos that people do about people, I know these dudes. I've been in prison with some of these guys. Donnie's one of them. Like, Donnie was a, you know, there's some dangerous dudes in there, man. Some dangerous dudes that are pushing the envelope. There's dudes in there that don't give, they ain't never getting out. So they don't care. You're 17 years old. You come in here. They don't care about you. All them stories you heard about prison changed. Remember all them stories? If you go to prison, don't gamble. Don't mess with homosexuals. And um, uh, don't owe any debts. And never tell anybody how much time you got. And you'll be okay. Don't work that way. Prison is much more vicious now probably than it ever was. Why? Because, listen, back in the day, you know, you get them hillbillies in there working and you got street dudes getting jobs in there, man, so they can get paid. Cell phones, driving drones in. Nobody gives a... Think people are going to be working over there for fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year? Man, they ain't trying to do that. They'd rather do Uber. Yeah, Nick, I don't know. I hope the captain hears us tonight. I hope he shows up. When he talked to me, he said, look, man, this is how he talks. So when I seen you, you know, you were a terrorist to me, man. You know, you're an ex-prisoner. He said, but I started watching you, and I like you because you keep it real, man. You keep it real there, Chad. And I said, well, buddy, I appreciate you. I want to bring you on. If he's watching, bro, tag, come on. You know, I had your, your buddy on here at AW. You can come on. Maybe I'll buy some books. We'll do some signed books and Whatever books we sell, we'll give the money to some people that need some money. How's that sound? How about we do that? I heard Amazon drivers make $24 to $45 an hour. Shit, I might have to go get me a job over there. You know what I'm saying? They're paying that kind of money. Amazon, hold on, let's give them a call. Hey, Siri, call Amazon. I don't see an Amazon fulfillment set. Oh, <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> I want someone to smile tonight. So anyway, man. It's Christmas time, right? What do you think Christmas is like in prison? Yes, yes, he was the captain at Lewisburg. Taggart. I blew you up, Taggart, even though you didn't come on. I'm blowing you up, bro. Let's go, Tag. I don't think Amazon's paying like that. Someone Google that. Let's see what Amazon's paying. I got to find out. We got to find out. How scared were you when you found out you were going home while you were in the pen? Let's do that. Who wants to ask questions tonight? I'll answer some questions. Um, I didn't find out I was going home while I was in the pen. I ended up making it out of the pen. And I was actually at FMC Lexington, Federal Medical Center. I was only there for nine months, one of the worst prisons I was at, and probably one of the most dangerous. You had high inmates there, low inmates, medium inmates, dudes with life, dudes with three years, one cop, 300 prisoners. It was definitely a dangerous place. Good money, depending on the state. Christmas in prison, man, used to crush me, man. I used to think about when I was a little kid, we used to go to my grandma's house and used to be in the cell like, damn, man, everybody's getting together. You know, a lot of people like me in there. You know what I mean? So, you know, the Paisas be having a Christmas party. I'm at the Paisas party eating. I'm eating burritos, chimichangas. You know, the homies have a party, man. I'm invited. I'm the jailhouse lawyer, man. Help, you know, New York dudes have a Christmas party. I'm over there. People are chefing up nachos. And listen, man, but ain't none of that shit any good, man. 
You want to be home with your family, man. You don't want to be in there. Ever meet any cats from Oklahoma? Yes, I have. I met a couple good dudes from Oklahoma, man. What the hell was Oklahoma Mike? Oklahoma Mike, I think his name was. He was a pretty well-known dude, man. I never personally met him, but he was a very well-known dude. But I met some good dudes from there. Average Amazon delivery is 1761, which meets the national average. Damn. Bluegrass, a.k.a. Thunderdome. So the craziest thing happened, right? What's my opinion on what's going on in Ireland? It's absolutely crazy, bro. Some of the shit I've seen on the news, like, wow. Um, They came and told me, pack my shit, I was leaving. And then they were like, oh, shit, we made a mistake, right? That was the first one they got me on. Then I had like 50-something days left. COVID's going on. And then that day, I think I told this story on here, I get ready to walk out pretty much at the gate, and they call on the walkie-talkie like, 10-4, hey, Mark, stop him. There's an appeal. Stop him. You want to talk about being heartbroken. That shit hurt worse than every Christmas put together that I spent in prison. But um, I stayed for like 50-something days. We ended up filing what's called an interlocutory appeal. The Second Circuit, they put a hold on me. And two weeks later, I ended up getting out. John Gleason was my lawyer. The same guy who prosecuted John Gotti was a federal judge for, what, 23 years? They took over my case, helped me out, and I ended up getting out. Thank God. Prison ends up sucking you into survival mode, got you clicking up, and then you have deeds to do for your gang. And if you refuse, they'll get you. And if you take PC, you're still not safe. Let's talk about that for a minute, about gang members, right? Let's talk about the gang member thing. Because everybody's got this thought, well, not everyone, but a lot of people, even me probably, before I ended up in a real prison, you get this thing where you're like, hold on one second. Caleb Cloud, I appreciate you. PayPal. Sent the 25 piece to the PayPal. Thank you, buddy. We appreciate you. Was that for an audio book? I'll send it over. Um, but I'm going to send the audio books. Hopefully, if it's not too many, I'll send them all tonight. If not, I'll send them in the morning. Um, see, when I, I start talking about other stuff, I get start going off. Alabama has the pink ribbon going. Alabama's horrible. Oh, gang members. Like, I've seen some dudes, man. Like, man, look at the video I put up with a white dude in Alabama. Got the gang shit on him. And he's getting punched in the face and not fighting back. You know, there's this persona of tattoos, man, and white gang member or black gang member or Mexican gang member or Spanish. Like, all these dudes are tough. Not all these dudes are tough, man. Some dudes get in the gang, they get beat in, but some of them don't got no harm. And I would always think, like, yo, you're a gang member, man. You, you got to have some gangster shit in your blood. But not everybody's built like that. Some people get, man, I've seen people bring dudes in gangs where you're like, are you serious? Harvey talks prison. We see big Harv in the house. I'm like, yo, are you serious right now? You can't be serious. This dude's in your gang. Remember the Latin King dude that we, we talked about went around shooting people. He was mentally retarded and his face was like, yo, what's that? Like, are you serious? Someone should have been like, nah, come on, bro. You, you can rock with us, hang out, whatever, but come on, man. Are you serious? Now I've seen some gangster ass Gang members get punched in the face and not fight back. I may have talked about the dude. We're in Raybrook, big ass dude, brolic, talking about he was from California, throwing up that blood sign. Like, yo, yo. Talking about Suge Knight was his cousin and all of that. And I seen him fold and go up town. Like, dudes took his shit. And he was, this was a big dude. And then he goes and goes in the office. Now, look, even the cops thought this dude was that dude because. You know, the way he, he told his stories. He told his stories to everybody. And people really thought, like, yo, he was that. The cops thought he was that dude. And then one of the cops had told me about dude in our unit. He was like, look, when I was in Raybrook, like, I'm from New York. So when I was in Raybrook, a lot of them cops, man, over there. Dude, Raybrook was the best prison I've ever been in. How the hell could you say prison was a good place? No prison is good. But if you have to weigh them all up, Raybrook was the best prison I was at. The staff, to me, were you know, pretty much respectful and, you know, they, they, men respect men, whether you're a prisoner or a convict or whatever, right? Aaron Gobrog. Um, I don't have no 13 shoes, brother. I understand, but I don't have them. Adam has state time, but I'm working on some stuff for Adam. So Adam does have some state time he's supposed to do. 
But we might be able to get that thing nunk pro tunk. That's what it's called. Barden versus Kia Ham. We might be able to fix that. If you ever experience a tough guy turn to a boy and start acting and dressing like a girl? I seen this white kid come in, man, at Lee County, and I thought he was an all right dude. Next thing I know, man, he's on that skin flute. But um, not really. I never seen no real gangsters turn into no. Does it happen? I think it does, but I never really personally seen that. Um, <clears throat> let me think. Oh, so yeah, everybody's not built like that, man. Some dudes are faking, and then when they get checked, you're like, damn, bro. Like, yo, they said, dude, he went up top. And dude ended up telling the cops, like, yeah, man, you know, I only got a little bit of time. And the cop was telling me he was telling him that. And, it, and the cop was like, he said at first he was believing it. Then he was like, nah. He was like, yeah, I only had a little bit of time. I was going to kill them dudes. But I decided, you know, it was best for me to just leave. Because sometimes when dudes, most times, when people check in, it's almost like they can't live with themselves, right? They got a story they have to tell. Their narrative is, yo, I ain't no punk, man. But I had to. And I've said this before. I'm not going to never allow myself to be put in a position where you're like, damn, man, Chad was doing good, bro. He's out there working. He was piecing them dudes up. Oh, man, I like swinging them things a little bit sometimes. And you know what, man? They ended up stabbing him and kill him. I'm going to jump on you in the kitchen, man. Call it a check-in move. Call it whatever you want. I'm jumping on you, man. Because you know what? Ain't nothing fair in prison. Them dudes ain't fighting fair when they send five dudes on you. But if you punch them in the face in the kitchen, you're a check-in. Well, if you got five dudes on me at one time, I think you're a check-in. Michael Lemieux, we appreciate you, brother. We see that cash app come in. Thank you, brother. Steve Edwards, appreciate you. Chris Clapham, Clapham, we appreciate you. Chris is my boy, too, man. Appreciate you, man. Hey, Chad Crew, I'm still loving the bet, the show. Best on YouTube. We appreciate you, man. With respect from down under, J Money, Jason in the house. Five on one is fun when you not the one. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. I'm shooting some hundreds on that. Shooting some hundreds on that. You know, I've been in some positions, man, in prison where I don't know how I made it out of them. You know, there were times, man, and I think me and Dog talked about it on the yard where, man, there was some racial tension, and you're like, damn, bro, everything's quiet. You're on a prison yard every day. People are yelling, screaming, playing baseball and handball and basketball. And then everybody quiets down and nobody's doing anything. It's like a standoff. Then you hear the cop up there, <laughs> rack that gun, man, at 12 gauge or pull that slide back. You're like, that's when you know this shit is real, man. That's when you know people can start dying. There they go, hitting the hearts, the hundreds. Let's hit them. Damn, put some smiley faces up in their hearts. Chad, do you think that lady's story yesterday was accurate or is her son running game? I think it was accurate to some extent. I think that he was violated. I think that he started having his boy like stab him in the arm and in the hand and sending his mother pictures because he started getting high. And that's horrible when you do something like that to your mama. Your mom can't, she can't sleep at night. She's worried about you. And she was smiling at times. You know why? To mask her pain, her desperation, her sadness. Nobody wants to see their son getting stabbed. Nobody wants to see their son addicted to fentanyl. Nobody wants to see their son go to prison for 20 years at the age of 17. Who wants to see that? Nobody wants to see that. Come on now. I was down during the Rodney King riots. I could only imagine. I remember walking home from middle school. And uh, listen, man, we're walking home from middle school. These dudes are jumping all white folks. We're just teenagers. I'm with my boy Vince Longo. My boy was like the real karate kid. My man was a black belt at 13. Ends up doing a jump spin kick. Kicks this kid. They're about to try to jump us, man. He got us up out of there. Thank you, Vince Longo, if you're tuning in. He saved us during the Rodney King riots. 22 in the feds, OG freeze. OG freeze. 22 in the feds, man, hit me up on an email. Maybe we should do an interview and talk to you. Salvador Hernandez says, I still got the pictures. I got cornered in the cell by the neighborhood Chris for taking their cell phones dope and money. I had to hit the man down for the first time. Me and you should be doing an interview, bro. Email me. Put up that email real quick so they know where to email us at. Let's, uh, I'll do it. Freedom Fighters PC at Gmail. 
gmail.com. Send me an email. Look, man, doing something for Christmas tomorrow with my kids. Country beat me. Country beat me. But hit me on an email, man. Let's talk, man. I make about the same hour rate doing this kind of work. You need some BGF stories on here. How about some BMF stories? I'm in contact with some of them BMF dudes, man. How were you able to mentally survive the hole in prison? And what's your most scariest dream in prison? <laughs> you want this shit to be real? Okay. Mentally survive the hole in prison. When you first go, most people will tell you that you get depressed, right? Instantly. Cell's all dirty. You clean your cell. And I usually sleep for the first couple of days. And then you start to get into a routine. Let's keep it real. When I, I spent 14 months in there straight. And there were times I started to fall apart. I was reading a lot of them Wilbur Smith books. You guys remember the Wilbur Smith books? I was reading all of them like fictional history, but kind of loosely based on the truth, whatever. A bunch of Vince Flynn books. Reading a book is like watching a series. You know, you might have been watching Queen of the South or you might have been watching um, Animal Kingdom. Remember that show? Or uh, remember the corner back in the day? Like you look forward to it. You got a good book. You look forward to it. Read it a little bit in the morning, work out in the morning, you know, eat your lunch, take a nap. I used to take these little yellow pills for my allergies, right? And anybody that ever had them, those things are the things that really work. And sometimes I would take it and I would just walk in my cell, pacing back and forth, pacing back and forth. I'm talking about for hours until I'd be so tired and drowsy. And I think they that them allergy pills used to twist me up, man. Now, I wasn't overindulging or getting high or taking two, three at a time. No, I'll take one. I did have allergies, which I still got horribly bad. Um, but don't think that there ain't times, man. You know, dudes that get on here, you know, freestyle. Don't think there ain't times when you're laying in that bed, man. You're in the cell. And sometimes I, I spent months in there without a celly, right? They had us all under investigation for a big K2 investigation. Spent 14 months in there. And they didn't want us with cellies. And, man, for real, man, I just lay in the bed, man, sometimes. And start crying, man. Like, damn, I just want to get the fuck out of here, man. That stuff hurts. I'm supposed to stop cussing. I promised my wife I'd stop cussing. I got to work on that. Um, so anyway, and and the most scariest dream, sometimes I used to dream I was never getting out. And I'd wake up. Sometimes, you know, as I started to get older, it wasn't necessarily a dream, but I used to start panicking, have day panics. Like, damn, I'm getting too old, man. Am I ever going to get out of here? Getting too old, man. I ain't never gonna have kids, and I ain't never gonna have a wife, and I ain't never gonna be normal. So it really wasn't a dream at night. It was more of a shit bothers me now to even think about them. It's almost like people that are watching the show when you've been to prison, you probably could, maybe you could relate. Like sometimes when you you think about certain things, you feel it again. You ever just feel it? Like, damn. Sometimes when I talk about this stuff, it's like I'm experiencing it again. Like, I don't want to experience that. I don't want to feel that ever again. That's how real it is. Those were the dreams. They were daydreams. The daydreams were the scariest dreams, right? What's your opinion on free phone calls? Free phone calls are for, nice, right? But it probably creates numerous problems. I was there when they started giving out free phone calls, and it was, it was not good. They were giving out free phone calls since COVID. I think they're stopping it now, right? Never tried bee pollen. Like right now, like I'm gonna because I don't feel good. <clears throat> I got allergies, even in the wintertime, right? You're out here doing good, real good, man. I try to, man. I try to do everything I can, man. I remember people weren't people sniffing like them well butrins and seroquils in there. Dudes are like sniffing this shit. You're like, what the f how does employee the tractor trailer drive through the, but the people that drive or your package are at the bottom of the totem pole? Tyler, I wish I got my shirt. Man, I didn't send you a shirt, Tyler. How much does a cell phone go for in prison? It all depends. Depends on what prison you're at. Big money in most in, in federal prisons. You're all right. Video's lagging. You got to speed it up. You got to go down to the bottom and speed it up. The pill you're looking for. Okay. So anyway, you know, 
I mean, we answered a couple of questions. I wish, you know, we should do that questions like you call in. Who should we bring on as a guest and do it like a live with a guest and have, uh, you know, have have people call in. Thirty five hundred for a cell phone. <laughs> in Trenton, they had RMU, reduced mobility. You know, these days they call it the shoe. You got to do half your mandatory minimum in RMU. We sued and won. Man, I ain't played spades in years. Dirty hearts, all of that. Boy, Michael French, easy. I reached out to them already. You ever experienced a female getting walked off the compound? Continue to progress. I don't know who you are, right? But for some reason, I think, man, you might, I don't know. Do you know me? Were you ever working in a prison? But yes, I have seen a woman get walked off a compound on a couple of occasions. Hey, Chad, what's the craziest nicknames you've heard? This dude, I talked about this dude on here, Knowledge. He had to be the one of the dumbest people I ever met, and his name, they called him Knowledge. Pants hanging off, 50 years old, talking about, yo, what's up, Shane? You're like, yeah, bro. He's still waiting on a record deal. He's been rapping since he was 10, and his record deal is coming out soon. He was that type of dude. I've heard a lot of crazy names, man. Salvador, I got your email, homie. I'm going to hit you up tomorrow. Send me your phone number, bro. Candy Williams. Shout out to Candy Williams. Send us an email. So anyway, listen. Let me see. Oh, you guys want to know something crazy? You guys want to laugh a little bit tonight? We're not going to close out yet. Give four or five minutes, we'll close out. So, <laughs> oh my God. There's this dude, right? He's a gay dude, right? We're in Coleman. This motherfucker looks like Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> you guys want to laugh or no? So the gay dude, right? I used to have... Uh, Man, I, I've been around some uh I've been around no, I watched Banky Pound. He did I know who Banky Pound is. I don't know him personally, but I know who he is. Um Sterling, you gotta send me another email. But if I send you an audiobook, you have to download it because if not, my emails get so filled up, I have to delete them. I delete the email once that audio book is gone. All right. So Gay like Bam. So they were calling this dude looked like Weird Al Yankovic, right? They were calling craziest names. They were calling this dude, man, Howard Sperm, Weird Al Yankadick. Those are some crazy names. Like you asked with some crazy ass names. Man, listen. <laughs> I had a friend, man. I always run into funny ass dudes. I, I'm listen, you got some people feel like, oh Chad, you're always so serious. But man, I used to joke and play all the time, right? Joke and play to keep from crying. And people say, like, yo, bro, you got me dying. <laughs> so yeah, continue to progress. <laughs> My boy Shy Town, sh shy till I die. Man, they were calling this man weird hell yanking dick. I'm like, yo. And I'm looking around like, damn, bro, these dudes are like loving this dude and shit, right? And I'm looking at this dude like, man, this dude, man, has got to be one of the ugliest dudes I've ever seen in my life. You got to be a bad MF or let him. Any dude, but you got to be a damn effort, right? <laughs> Let that dude blow you. Holy shit. I shouldn't talk like that on here, but I mean, you asked, so I'm answering. <laughs> and how about this dude? You guys want to see something funny, right? Let me see. Hold up. I'm going to show you something funny. So this is my, let me see. My brother sends me this little meme right here. You see this meme right here with this dude? This dude is the like transgender swimmer. I don't want people to get mad, but like, I'm not subscribing anymore. But man, it is what it is. Uh oh, Jenny, I should have her bring the boys down. Maybe on the next live, we'll bring the boys down. They're getting big, man. Um, Jenny is my wife, so. Um, so anyway, you guys remember this dude, <laughs> the swimmer? Like some people might get mad at me. The funniest meme I've ever seen. Right? Is that they call memes? I used to call memes when I first got out of prison. I didn't even never even heard of a meme. I said, man, you see that meme? They're like, the meme? I'm like, yeah. Fat cat released on compassionate release. Joshua, send me an email. I'll send you a free audio book, bro, if you want it. Send me an email tonight. Um, so one of the funniest memes I ever seen was that dude after he won like the swimming contest. He was like, I won that fair and square. And if you don't like it, you can suck my. What the? F <laughs> yeah, that was a man. That was that had me rolling, man. The Mimi. <laughs> yeah, I thought that shit, man. I used to call it the Mimi when I first got out. Boys boxing yet? <laughs> they got some punching bags, and Chase walks up to him and he goes, 
He swings on it. Sometimes you just walk up and kick it, swing on it. I caught a live. Yeah, the notifications, man, they're crushing us on YouTube, man. You guys want the truth. Listen, I think we got a pretty good show. We got some really interesting guests. But come on, man. We interviewed like Troy Kell, right? Like, come on, dude. You're interviewing wardens on this joint. Yo, what up with Unique Mecha Audio? Is he official or a bandit? I like Unique, man. He's got his own style, things that he's going on, that he's got going on. I think he was really getting money at one time. He's out here. I don't know. But I know he's he's been some. I know he took Johnny Mitchell into some dangerous places. I know that. I know he's got a lot of respect. I know he's around people. I was never in prison with Unique. I know he's been around some real serious gangsters. I can tell you that. You think Lou Sims would be around Unique if he wasn't official? Lou Sims is. Was, <laughs> trust me, when I say Lou Sims was that dude, he was that dude. Dude, I just choked on oatmeal. It went down the wrong tube. You should get an ex-female CL. I got one, man, but she's on the CARES Act. As soon as she comes off the CARES Act, damn, you guys ain't going to believe her story. Good person. She was, she's a good person, made a, made a bad choice. Got busted bringing shit in in Georgia. Gave her a fed beef. Hey, Chad, what's the best you use at the beginning of your videos? It's hard. Hey, man, my boy Devin made that back in the day. Oh, D money. Shout out from Houston. Listen, man, I appreciate everybody coming out tonight. Unique gave you props the other day. I like Unique. Got nothing bad to say about him. Even though we were doing an interview, right, and your man broke into someone called him, and he's like, yeah, Bridget, what y'all say, man? What y'all do? Uh-huh. I'm like, damn, bro, we're in the middle of the interview. And you're hitting them with the with the Ray Gage and Megan accent. Come on, Unique. Not in the middle of the interview, bro. You guys see that interview? Yeah, man, what y'all doing? I'm like, holy shit, yard style rude boy. Got curry chicken. I'm like, damn, I ate some curry chicken today. Went in the hood, Lyle Avenue, in the hood. Was she hot? Come on, Mike. Since you sent a $25 donation, I'll tell you the truth. I don't know, never seen a picture of her. But my wife's on here, bro. Don't be asking me shit like that in public, dude. I'm just playing. So anyway, look, meet any hoods from Albany. Met some gangsters from Albany in my life, in, in the state system and the feds. Yes, Philly's in the house. Fly, Eagles, fly. Who's the scariest inmate you ever met? John Powers. Not that he was the scariest, but he, I mean, this dude's done some vicious, vicious things to himself. If you could bite off your fingers and cut your balls off, I'm scared of you. Like my son said, my son turned the shower on the other day, right? We never say these words to him. And he goes, I'm scared. I'm like, what? I turned the shower off real quick, giving him a bath. He hit the button. He's like, I'm scared. I'm like, what? The, where'd you learn that at? So then we're watching Frozen the other day with him. And one of the girls says she was scared or something. I said, that's where he got it from. But John Powers, man, definitely, uh, I don't know exactly how Devin's doing right now, school wise, but you know, John was definitely a dangerous dude. When I talk about Adam Oliveri, Adam could be dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Bad things could happen. Um, so as far as scariest inmates, I mean, I've been around some dudes that had some major power where you're like, if dude, if dude calls the shot, your ass is out. I've been around some black hand dudes where you're like, it don't matter. If they're gonna get you, they're gonna get you. Just got back from voting my brother. From visiting my brother in Terre Haute, the SEALs are crazy with him. Six-man transport with the lieutenant at all times. Dude, I would love for him to do an interview, bro. I know he's on death row. I would love it. I, I seen that fat cat Williams thing. Ten-year state time. Philly made. Andrea, send me an email. I will send you. You said your husband watches every video, but he's blind. Andrea. Andrea, send me an email. I'll send you an audio book. Chad, say the wall ball line. My, I'm a little not feeling so good. Coolest inmate, Jimmy Romans. Jimmy was probably one of the coolest inmates in my boy Dog, man. Dog is a funny mother. If you guys seen my first interview ever on this channel, the dog pound, man. The dog pound. Yeah, you know, my boy John, but you want to play a little wall ball? I'm like, what? You want to play a little wall ball? <laughs> Go check out Time Tracker with Jack Powers. 
What's up, Chad? Finally caught a live. These notifications aren't working. Philly made, man. We appreciate the 4 dollars tonight, man. God bless you. Look, I'm going to go upstairs, help my wife take care of the kids. We're doing this big Christmas thing tomorrow with them. Um, appreciate everybody on here. Um, continue to progress. We appreciate you. Half black skinhead. Ha yeah, you know who that is. It's Leo Felton, my boy. Never in Victorville. Golden Bachelor starts in four minutes. Oh, that's my wife. Oh, she watches this Bachelor show. Ross Owens, what's up, big dog? Oh, so yeah. So my wife's going to watch The Golden Bachelor tonight, and I'll be watching the boys until they go to bed at about nine. Jimmy, we're going to do a little Christmas drive. That's why we're taking donations. We're going to do something for Christmas. Send out some shoes. Um, I, hey, listen, man, if you're watching, you know who you are. Um, them 10 and a half, the LeBrons, I still got them. I went to Foot Locker and bought them for you, bro, and lost your lost your thing. So you have to send me your address. Look, my kids get on my phone and do all kinds of crazy stuff. I bought the shoes for you, and I lost your address, man. Get at me, man. I got some shoes for you. Everybody else, the shoes have been sent out. We do what we can, man. Other people donate, whatever. Look, we're going to do a Christmas drive coming up here very soon. Got some people in mind. If you're struggling, let us know. Send us an email. Send us some pictures. We got some people that we put on the list already. Jenny, put that foot down. Yeah, I got to go. My wife's going to kill me. The Golden Bachelor's coming on, and she wants to watch it. I think it's like the season finale. Who you like this Sunday? Look, when I was a kid growing up, I was a Niners fan, bro. Straight up. Chad, you are the shoe and cap guy. Appreciate you, man. Badass podcast, Chad. Keep it up. Um. Like the Niners to beat the Eagles, man. Um, I bet you the Bills win this week. Oh shit, they got to buy. But anyway, listen, man. I appreciate everybody coming on here. Keep your head up. God bless you. I tell you, man. Go tell your kids that you love them, man. It's Christmas time. This is the time to be like, damn, man. I love my family. This is the time when you really should think, man. If you're in the streets, you're doing the wrong thing. Like, I don't never want to leave these dudes, man. I love these kids, man. I don't never want to leave my wife. I love my wife. I don't ever want to. You know, have my mom or anybody else struggle. I love them. So, look, the audio books, because I got to go take care of the kids, I will send them in the morning. I'll be in my office about 4.35 in the morning. So if you get an email at 4.30 in the morning, just know that your boy Chad is up and at it. With respect, man, until tomorrow, we're out. Appreciate everybody. Let your mom know, your wife know, your kids know. It's Christmas time and that you love them.